Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the second part of uh, the Goblet. It's quite a fun turning project, this one. I quite enjoy doing the old Goblets. I'm now working on the bit that I left on the bottom. Um, this is going to be a captured ring. So I'm just uh, getting the, what wood I got left down to an approximate size that I need. As I said before, I tend to work the stem down as I go on this type of project. Um, because then you won't put too much strain on it once you uh, thin it out at the bottom. Just trying to get it to a rough size. I was using my spindle gouge and my uh, other tool just to tidy up the stem a bit. I will have to do some work afterwards but uh, I try to get it about as good as I can to start with. Also tidying up the little uh, bead under the, the bowl of the goblet. I said I want to get most of that done before I take too much more off the bottom. I'm working on the base now and to find uh, the bit of the ring or bead as it is at the moment into a rough shape before I do any more. Doing very minimal cuts on it. So I'm, I'm sort of tidying it rather than actually shaping it, I'm just refining it a bit. And I will do a bit more with the scraper just to tidy it up and round it off. Also, with it, I'm uh, sanding the, the top of the bead off get that done while it's still attached um, because a bit later on it's difficult to refine that any then this is quite a neat tool I've only had this in latter years it's uh, designed for doing captured beads quite easy to use, well easy-ish. Um, for years I did them with just standard tools but this does make life a lot easier. As you can see it's like a hook tool so the idea is you start by bringing the very tip in and then you've sort of got to push it in and revolve the handle around so you're shaping the underside of the bead. It's quite good fun to do. It's a bit nerve-wracking because if you do it too much it'll crack and then uh, you've got no bead anymore then but I quite enjoy the bit, a bit of fun. We'll work it in from both sides now, um, and then that way you, you want to try before it breaks off to shape both sides a bit so it um, looks about right because you can't really machine, once it breaks loose you can't machine it again then. There you see, it's 
now broke loose so it's uh, free flowing now you can see underneath unfortunately I nicked a bit of the stem a bit deeper than I meant but I tend to leave that a bit thicker so I can machine it back down again um, to smooth it out now I'll refine the base a bit more as well you can see how the, the bead is moving up and down and uh, as I move it with the tool you can see it's all loose there um, it does tend to get in the way a bit but that's fun the worst come to the worst you uh, if it breaks you've still got a goblet so it's not a, a real big one but it's quite a neat little I enjoy doing it so there we are I just refining a bit more of the stem and the, the bait or the foot or whatever you like to call it um, to finish it off back on me gauge again now I'm taking minimal cuts now because the more I'm refining you, the heavier cuts just to get it to a shape and then I tend to make light cuts and slowly bring it down to what you want and if you do the lighter cuts they uh, give you a better finish that way As you can see, working around the ring can be a bit of a nuisance. It, uh, it, it makes for an interesting job in here. I tend to like the stems being fairly thin. I don't like them too thick, they just don't look in proportion then. But I tend to shape it to uh, what, how I think it'll look good and then uh, refine it as the wood, as you go on the wood, because uh, the wood will tell you uh, a bit more at once. off camera there um, what I've done is so I can finish it a bit easier I've got a bit of masking tape securing the ring down the other end because I want to do some real refining on the top of the stem where it meets the bead underneath and I got fed up with the, the ring getting in the way so uh, problem solved With jobs like this, I've got a set of mini um, wood turning tools that I use, and they work quite well for this type of job. That's what they're designed for. Um, I'm using a little uh, half round scraper on it now. But still go back to the old favourite and use the big one as well. It's a mix what tools you like. I tend to vary it according to how it's going. Like, so 
all down to a bit of personal preference like as I said before these are the ways I like to do it I found work for me but don't necessarily mean they're right for everyone so if you want to have a go you know, try it and uh, work at your own method that's what I've done all these years I've slowly refined how I like to do things it can be a bit tricky to get the transition between the different shapes to match quite well and finish nice and evenly um, I had a bit of the bowl where it met the bead wasn't quite right so that's why I refined it a little bit more Again off camera I've uh, moved the bead to the top of the stem now so I can work on the bottom and the base like I say it just gets out of the way it makes life a bit easier. I tend to do a lot of me finishing and refining work with this scraper. It's one of me, again, one of my favourite tools. You'll see there's some tools I tend to use in pretty much every bit of turning and others only use occasionally. Uh, it's all down to personal preference, like... And the old shear scraping does uh, give you a, quite a good finish on it. You can get a finish almost, uh, and sometimes I've done it where I've even had to sand it. It takes off a little tiny bit of wood each time. It's almost like a shaving. You'll see it as it goes. What I've done here, I've uh, obviously taken uh, the tape off. I've also used the friction polish on it again because uh, I'm sure whether it was a bit tricky with the ring. I'm not sure how good a choice the friction polish was, but I committed myself so I had to finish it. But it comes out alright. But when you've got a thin stem like this, um, you've got to be careful you don't put too much pressure on the top. Because if you happen to put too much on, you can splinter the stem. So it just takes a bit, go a bit steady with it. And with this stuff, it tends to work better if you build it up a little bit at a time. So I keep dampening my cloth with fresh stuff until I get the finish I like, and then I'll finally buff it off a bit drier. But it works well. It's quite satisfying when you see the finish come up. I think that's why I like the friction polish because you can see it working before your eyes. Like it's a, a gradual process, but 
very satisfying, or I find it so, anyhow. It's quite fun to see the ring dancing around there. You can see we're trying to gain traction, but it does look quite good doing that. More on the finishing bit now, it's uh, the cloth will be uh, a bit drier and as you're doing it you'll slowly see the shine or sheen come up as you work it. You know, uh, the beauty is you can do it as you want it to do, you, don't, you haven't got a set finish on it, not like varnish or something like that. And you just take your time with it, it will uh, be finished when it is, you get it looking about right because once you part it off you can't polish it anymore so it just pays to take your time and be happy with it and then when you are you can part it off then but you can see by the reflection of the light you can see the polish starting to really show its sheen you can see the way it's reflecting There it is, it looks quite uh, quite pretty if I do say so myself. Again, it's a bit more difficult in the transition, especially like between the bowl and that top bead to get it an even polish. It just takes a bit of playing with. And there we have the finished article. Uh, I didn't bother uh, show it uh, me parting off. Oh, uh, that's quite easy to do. But uh, you can really see how the grain has come out on the bowl and all. And the little ring being loose. Just a little, little party trick type thing. So it uh, works quite well. I do like the way it almost glows in the light with the finish on it. It, uh, yeah, I find it quite satisfying. Well, and that's that. So that's another project down. I hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, how it's come out. And if you do, if you could leave a like and even better subscribe, you'd uh, help to make an old man's day. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.